Good morning. So this morning, we're talking about when you drop the ball. And no, it's not New Year's Eve when we have that grand ball dropping. It's in New York or wherever they have it. And our text comes to us from 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. It says, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Boy, have I been dropping that ball a lot lately. Every once in a while, I feel like, oh, Everything is in control and all together. And I can't remember when that was, but yep, every once in a while. Every once in a while, you feel like you're in the group and everything is going well. You not only remember the appointments, but you have time for everyone else and everything else. I almost forgot those days when, oh, my calendar was always full. <laughs> but you still had time. You weren't, there were not stuff in there that were must do or have large consequences if we're not done. Sometimes we have time to go for walks and for runs and for, and that should be every day. But boy, have I been dropping ball on that. Meeting deadlines and giving a gracious time to those in need and boy, the ball is dropping a lot. Uh, but there are times when you make everything and you're like, hey, enemy, get off the case. I'm on time. I have control. Everything's all together. Sounds like foreign to some of us. Well, maybe for some of you, that's where you've been and that's where you've always been. You're in control. Everything is going to schedule. You're on time, never late. Everything is just smooth sailing. But for some of us, kind of remember when the last time was, when the board didn't drop. I've experienced also those subsequent crash of missing the shot and letting the ball drop. Like I was online doing my, I was doing my assignment while waiting for my advisory meeting. And I was watching the time and the, the moment I sat and was writing something and it just slipped by and an hour and a half has passed and I missed my advisory meeting. Yeah, dropped the ball. <laughs> and I had to apologize for not turning up when I said I would. And yeah. I've had a few people upset because of time indifference and my computer gave me the wrong time and I was on one hour late and they would they text me, oh, everything okay? I'm like, yeah, I'd be on in an hour. And just to find out that my computer clock was wrong, I dropped the ball. Ah, am I getting forgetful? Lack of sleep does that. Yeah, boy, 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 boy. I thought I was kind of, just hanging on and holding it together. But my fragility gets in the last, the way and have the last word. All these examples are understandable and often have reasonable explanations. We're all human and need to rest. And even the best of us run a bit late sometimes or miss a favorite or miss an appointment or, or disappoint someone even when you try your best. A lot rides on us having good circumstances and good health and good communication. And we have the illusions of power when everything is near perfect. When we feel energized and organized and on our games, it's our favorite season of the year or others are supportive of us. Boy, has this Olympics been dropping the ball on us. Injuries and all sorts and prejudice and all sorts going on. But eventually, one of life blows with a mental, physical, spiritual, or relational creates a crack in all of us. You were doing fine and then mommy died and you were doing fine and then your spouse died. You were doing fine and then something major happened, you got sick. We're often one household viruses, bad night sleeps and strained backs and unwanted diagnosis, lost jobs and arguments with the spouse or away from feeling powerless and out of our control. And that can be difficult for a lot of people. In this second letter to Corinthians church, Paul talks about these types of circumstances. And worse being afflicted, perplexed and struck down, said second Corinthians four verse eight. These words give a picture of someone overwhelmed by problems and trials that press in on every side. They show a person who is going without the necessary resources and in a, in a pinch, the feeling uncertain of what to do. 
We can imagine a person suddenly being humbled by circumstances laid waste by life and walking through intense persecution. And while Christians can walk through significant times of struggles, leading to feelings of floundering, fear and frustration, we've got to keep in the resiliency zone. Paul assures us that our lack doesn't portray the whole truth at all. That said, we often focus on the lack. And if we do, it either bumps us down or bumps us above our resiliency zone. And we have to get back in that and reground ourselves. We're not without hope, not completely crushed, not destined to despair, not forsaken by the Father, though sometimes you do feel forsaken, not people who hold it all together, not utterly destroyed. Our existence can't be distilled down to people who hold it together and some days and, and let life fall apart on others. We're always fragile vessels holding a treasure, according to 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. If I had a treasure, let's say a, a priceless jewel, I keep it somewhere very safe, right? Maybe in a bank or a vault or, or somewhere in my home, can afford those. So somewhere in my home, locked away where it felt safe. It would be hard for some, it wouldn't, it would be hard for someone to just walk in and look at it stealing and glaring at you. In today's day, we won't do that. We're not living in the bad days. I'd want to fortify it against every type of threat so I could keep possession of it. You wouldn't have gold bullions and leave them lying around your homes, would you? No, you wouldn't. I'd never toss the jewel into a bowl on my kitchen counter for safekeeping. I'll just chuck it on my desktop when I'm working with my books. No, I wouldn't. I would make sure it's in a safe space where it keeps its value. One small hand in search of a snack, one move of a book could send that precious jewel tumbling onto the floor and smack is no longer valuable. But in some ways, that's exactly what God does. He puts his treasure, his spirit, his kingdom, his son, inside of a jar of clay, a human believer, inside something that can be easily cracked, toppled and broken, inside something common and unfortified, inside something relatively weak. Why would he do that? A contrapose letter, when we're frazzled and forgotten, confused and hurt, or attacked and struggling, the treasure holds us together and proclaims the surpassing power of God in us. And I know sometimes you don't feel it, but it's there. Going back to the idea of a priceless jewel in a bowl on the counter, what if despite a little hand's dipping into its bowl and mishaps of ordinary life, or bowl being knocked over a few times and jostling around and something boiling over and splashing in it and cracked and jewels always remain unharmed. Depending on the quality of it. But if it's real jewel, it would be intact. And that's what it comes down to. Are you a real jewel for Jesus? Because if you're not a real jewel, you walk away. You walk away, right? Yeah. As jars were fickle, fragile vessels, not equipped, not strong enough or smart enough for the treasure we contain. But there's great hope because the weaknesses serves to emphasize God's power in our lives. This is why Paul later says he boasts of his weaknesses so the power of Christ can be seen working in and through him all the more, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. You might have days when you feel single-handedly holding everything together. For some of us, it could be everyday feeling. Yeah, that's becoming popular for a lot of people. Just barely making it true. But this is not a reason to boast you are a jar of clay. Rejoice and thank God for the smooth circumstances and strength. Resist the temptation of pride 
don't chalk it up on your own goodness because what a lot of people do, especially when they have a little bit of money and power. Oh, they treat everybody else like trash. On the flip side, don't disdain the days where you crack, start to show, and it seems that your best is not of purpose. You're still a jar of clay, and God uses every crack and fissure to show how well he can preserve his treasure in us, provide for us, use us, and exercise his perfect and good plan, despite our imperfect persons and the cracks and gaps and leaking and circumstances in our lives. To show that even if we die in these jars, we will be resurrected. So we do not lose heart, says 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16. It is not up to us to hold all things together. It's up to the Lord. 2 Corinthians Colossians 1 verse 17. And that's the problem. We've been trying to hold things together for too long on our own. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, God, for the reminder that it's not up to us to hold things together. And in spite of the state of our jars, Lord, we can come to you knowing that you have been sustaining us in, in those broken jars, those wrecked bodies, those whatever our circumstances that we face, God, you are still holding us there. Father, we pause to thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. Father, when life hits us and we're stuck and we don't know what to do, God, it's hard to even see that you're sustaining us. It's hard to even see the little blessings and the things you have done in our lives. So we ask for forgiveness for that. Give us perspective and help us to see through your eyes, Lord. Break through some of our doubts and our failures, Lord. Come through for some of us today, Lord. God, that's been my daily prayer for you to work through and come through for me, Lord. Father, I've been praying this prayer for much. But I keep reaching out to you, Lord, because I need that breakthrough. Lord, I lift up to Tiffany, Lord. See your health situation, Lord. I lift up her mom. And I pray, God, that your working in this situation will draw them closer to you, Lord, and in common to testify of your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Lord, I lift up those who are celebrating their birthdays this week and anniversaries. I lift up those who are hurting, those who are grieving, those who are recuperating. And to Tia, she recovered from a little surgery. Lord, we lift up those pathfinders who are in Gilead, Lord, and that know that they be safe, Lord, and this year will be drama-free. God, we ask you, Lord, to keep COVID away from the camp, because we know when we gather together, especially when Adventists gather together, there's a lot of casualties, Lord. Lord, hospitals are running short at the moment because the staff are coming down and people refuse to protect themselves. So God, I pray that you give us the wisdom to think not just about ourselves, but about those who are fragile, to protect those of the children as they walk around Gilead, Lord, and keep them safe and incident-free. Lord, I lift up all our lives. I lift up the list of those who want this opportunity to serve and those who are looking for a church home, those who ask for prayer and Bible study, Lord. Lord, you know their requests. And Lord, as we reach our community, Lord, I pray it's not just for the numbers, Lord, but because your love just pours out of us. and They need you too, Lord, in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Forgive us the first sins, Lord. But as I continue in my qualifying exam, God, I'm behind. Help me to get this first section finished so I can move to the second section. In Jesus' name we pray. Forgive us of the sin. Amen. Bless, bless. Have an amazing day.